believed what you heard. Are you so foolish after beginning, and I'm going to put in the power of the Spirit, are you now trying to obtain your goal by your own human efforts? Have you suffered so much for nothing? Verse 5, does God give you his spirit and work miracles among you because you observe the law or because you believe in what you've heard? Is it because of your works or is it because of your faith? Okay, and it's very strong words. You Galatians, they're born again Christians, by the way. They're, they're, they'll die and go to heaven. These are born again Christians. But he's saying, you're foolish who has bewitched you? There is no stronger word that can be used. To bewitch means you have come under a demonic deception. You started by faith and in the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's how you started as a movement. By faith, trusting in God and being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And now you've gone on to dead works, just human effort. The Bible is no longer the person Jesus Christ, it's now a book. Mm. So that brings us now to chapter 4 of Galatians. Starting with verse 17 and 18. Uh, those people are speaking specifically of the Pharisees and the Pharisee people. Um, those people are zealous to win you over, but for no good. Mm. So they're very zealous about their cause. It's like Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses. You know, I'll tell you what, I wish that some Christians were as zealous in evangelism right, as the Mormons. Oh, yeah. Like really, those guys, they knock on every door. They're at the train station, they're at the bus station. Um, they're sharing their faith, but their faith is not based in true knowledge. Okay, they've got a works religion, by the way. There's a lot of deception in Mormonism. They believe Jesus is the brother of Satan. But anyway, it's a cult. But the Mormons and the Jehovah Witnesses, they are so zealous. The Pharisees were so zealous to make converts. And so that's what Paul is saying. They're very zealous to make converts. They go out to win people to their faith. But it's no good. Why? What they want is to alienate you from us. In other words, to alienate you from the true uh, apostolic church, the, the true church of Jesus Christ that's filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. They want to alienate you from where God is really actively alive and moving to win you over to themselves. They want you to become zealous for them and their cause. It is fine to be zealous. It's good to be zealous. Okay, so nothing wrong with jealousy. That's, that's how, what we're talking about over the last few weeks. We want to be zealous. We want to be passionate for our God and live zealous, passionate lives. So nothing wrong with being zealous provided the purpose is good and to be so always, not just when I'm with you. He's saying... It's great to be zealous and passionate as long as your goal is correct. That's right. As long as you're being zealous, zealous and passionate about the person of God, mm. uh, about the truth of God, mm. uh, about the power of the Holy Spirit, but being zealous for Him, that's good. But it's so easy to fall from zealousy to God to zealously for the, the law of God. We're to worship the God of the law, not the Lord of God. Do you understand that? Mm. I, I, I don't, first and foremost, follow the Word of God. Have we got you? Mm -hmm. I follow the God of the Word. Mm. Mm. When you follow, first and foremost, the God of the Word, the Word of God comes alive. Mm. Mm. When you follow the God of the law, then you understand the spirit of the law. In other words, you understand what God is really saying. The problem is, they were following the law of God, and, and, and they had no genuine relationship with the person of God, and so now they're being deceived. It says that it's good to be zealous, provided you have your goal is good, and you be zealous all the time, not just when I'm looking at you. That's what he's saying, basically. Make sure that you're zealous for God, all the time, not just when you come to church on Sunday. That's right, yeah. 
Not just for when you're at the prayer meeting Wednesday night. You need to be zealous for God when I'm not looking and Humi's not looking. Because you know why? God is always looking. You need to be zealous for God in your sushi bars and... I just say sushi bar. We've got a lot of people working in sushi bars at the moment. But wherever you go, in the schools, Lisa, you know, with those kids, you know, wherever we go, we are to be zealous for God. That's what he's Zealousy is good, but you've got to make sure your goal is right. It's a living, active relationship issue. But now listen, in the context of what he just said, he says something very important. My dear children, for whom... I am again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. See, Paul is sharing with them these issues. And it, it, Paul was an incredibly intense man. He was very zealous for God. He was a Pharisee before he got saved, by the way. He, he knows all about the Pharisees. He was one. So, so all the Pharisees can get converted. <laughs> um, but the thing is, he says, I'm so passionate about this for you. I'm... I'm praying over you that you won't just have a form of godliness, but that you'll have the power of it. I pray that you'll have a passion and a zeal that will burn not just when I'm looking, but it will burn when I'm not looking. It will burn all the time. That you'll be passionate all the time with that holy flame. He says, and I'm praying for you, and it's so intense, I feel like I'm a woman in childbirth. A woman that's going through the travails of trying to push out that baby. You know, I'm trying to push you out. I'm trying to see Christ birthed in you. Mm. So these are very um, powerful and strong words that are coming from Paul. So in conclusion, I, I, I desire and I believe God desires that we would truly be those Passionate, zealous people. God definitely needs them at this time because darkness is arising. Uh, as a prophet said, in the last days, that which is evil will be called good and that which is good will be called evil. So now if you want to promote homosexual marriage and homosexual lifestyle, we get vilified because, you know, when we say we don't agree. That's right. Uh, and so they're, they're literally saying abomination and sin is good and anyone that doesn't agree with abomination and sin is evil. That's what the world is saying. So we need a people that will be zealous for God, zealous for His righteousness, zealous for truth. But we've got to understand the key to true zealousy is love. Do we really love, do we love the homosexual people? Do we love... Uh, the witches and the warlocks. Do we do we love the Islamic extremists? I'm not saying do we love what they do. Do we love the people? And this is a thing Jesus said to love your enemies. It takes an incredible passion to love your enemy. He says, "Bless those that curse you." This is this is how the true love and the passion of Jesus should flow out of our lives. That we love our enemies, that we pray for them, we bless those that curse us. We desire to see them blessed. It doesn't mean you can't argue with them about the truth, as long as your desire is that you want to win them over to the truth. But in the midst of our good intention, it's possible for us to fall into the Pharisaic trap. Because when you, you hate the sinner with their sin, you become a Pharisee. When you reject the sinner with their sin, when, when you curse those that curse you, when you don't love your enemy, Jesus is calling us to, this is why Paul, I think, is saying, I'm not perfected yet. I'm preaching stuff that's beyond me at the moment. I am this morning. I'm speaking out words that are beyond me because these are the words of God. I'm speaking to myself this morning. I'm not yet perfected, but I'm pressing on towards amen. the goal. Yeah, amen. I'm not going to give up. Amen. Until I learn how to every day fully bless those that curse me, love my enemies. Amen. How to separate myself from every sin and every sinful desire. Because there's only one way that you can defeat the darkness is with light. There's only one way that you can defeat hate is with love. 
And in God, in Jesus, there's a fire that burns. And as it says in the Song of Solomon, that fire that burns, the passion, the love that burns, it says it's stronger than the grave. It's more powerful than death. And many waters cannot quench its flame. Amen. See, water, the opposition of the enemy can quench our flame. We can cut our love off very easily. But the love of Jesus, the love of God, it can't be put out. So what if we can get that love that comes from God in our hearts? So let's worship the God of the law, not the law of God. Let's worship the God of the Word. When you know the Lord of the Word, I tell you what, the Word of the Lord is going to become so powerful and alive to you. So just invite you, close your eyes, bow your head, just respond to the Lord.